Experience magical fun and adventure by entering the simulated world of Eustace Farmer, bringing reality into the virtual reality. Hello, everyone, and welcome to one of two very special video presentations of Lone Oak Farm, which was created by Bullet Bill of Frontier Design for Farming Simulator 2017. Before we get started with the comparison, I want to talk to you all about some specific features, and excuse the pun, bullet notes, <laughs> that Bullet Bill gave me regarding Lone Oak Farm. I prepared a video presentation to play as I talk, showing the starting equipment and some clips illustrating what each of the sale points accepts. Tried to make it unique and entertaining, so I hope you'll agree. <laughs> so there's a few reasons why I'm breaking this video up into two videos. Number one is I don't want the information in this video to detract from the immersion in the second video, which is a tour of the entire map done in a character type story method. Those of you who have seen my other videos, you'll understand. Those who are new to the channel, well, you're in for a treat. <laughs> Number two, I feel shorter videos means faster rendering times in Adobe and more efficient upload and processing times with regards to YouTube. And number three, most importantly, I feel it's a more convenient length that can easily be watched in its entirety during a short break in your daily busy lives. And without your support and viewership, all this really means nothing. I'd be talking to myself. So thank you all sincerely very much for being part of the Eustace Farmer channel. Now, this is a very special map to me. This is a virtual representation of its real life counterpart. This farm belongs to the family of a dear friend of mine. We met very early on in the beginning of my YouTube adventure and he's helped me in too many ways to list or count, but I feel I'm much better at what I do because of his advice, feedback, and most of all friendship. I wish to protect the privacy of my friend and his family so I won't be using real names or giving specific details regarding exact locations of landmarks or other things that you'll see on the map so I do hope you'll understand. I've also become close friends with Bullet Bill and Oxygen David has become a dear friend so I would like to thank them all very much for everything they have done for me and I'm going to expand upon that in a certain clip later on in this video. So let's get to those bullet notes. <laughs> Number one, distance scenery. Bullet Bill and Oxygen David went to great lengths to make a map border that flows with the landscape and it's virtually seamless. Number two, foliage textures. Bullet Bill has taken painstaking care to fix any foliage texture issues and blended both the detail and distance together for a smooth, seamless transition. Now this is not common practice in my opinion among many map makers and You'll most likely not see this level of attention to detail in many maps, if any. Number three, grass distance textures. This is a good one, guys. Default FS17 maps don't have any distance textures for grass. However, frontier design maps do. What this means is all three growth stages for the grass show up at close range and in the distance. Again, this is not something you'll find in many other maps, in my opinion, outside of frontier design. Number five, realism. Again, this map is based on a real area in America's beautiful Pacific Northwest in the great state of Oregon. And I can't stress it enough, the family that owns this farm, one of them is a dear friend to myself, Bill of Bill and Oxygen David, and Frontier went to great lengths to take measures to assure their privacy. So if you happen to come across any telling information about the farm or its whereabouts, please do not contact them in any way, shape, or form, and please don't share that information with anybody else. Let's respect the family's privacy. Number six, map customization. Players can customize this map a great deal. Fields can be easily joined together to make mega fields, if that's your style of gameplay. There's several grass meadows that you can put placeables on, and next to Lone Wolf Grain Sale Point, there's more industrial space to place any kind of items that you want. The water source is number seven. <laughs> you don't fill your animal troughs up from the garden hose out in these parts, my friends. It's done the old-fashioned way, and maybe the economical way. There's two water sources on the map, one adjacent to the cattle yard on the main farm and one on the pig farm. To give water to your sheep, you're gonna have to either drive to one of those two locations or put a placeable water source of your choice down. Now you're gonna see other creeks and streams on the map and they could be a bit difficult to get to. So don't bother trying to traipse through the woods with your tractor and your water trailer because they don't give water. So just 
be aware of that. <laughs> all right, so let's go ahead and get to the comparison. So all the pictures are pretty self-explanatory, but that's not going to stop me from talking. <laughs> so as you see, this is the view of the main farm from the road on Google Earth. And the photos are labeled Google on the right, the in-game photos on the left. And there, off in the distance along the horizon on the right-hand side, is that lone oak tree. Now, this tree is, he told me it was about, I want to say between 200 and 230 years old. It's been standing up there that long. And that's the main farm right there on the left. And this is the second photo of the main farm. And this is taken also from the road, but facing towards the entrance into the farm. Done a remarkable job recreating this. And one thing that I've noticed, and it's not a problem, it's just something I've noticed in comparison to Google, it was a heck of a time for me to line up the shots and get the perspectives right, because things in the map are kind of closer than they are on Google Earth. So I suspect it's just because you have a smaller patch of real estate to work with in game than you do, you know, in real life, <laughs> if that even makes sense. So please forgive me if things don't match up quite exactly. And here's an overhead view. Now here I see a remarkable resemblance to the extreme right, right over here. That's the watering hole that's just adjacent to the cattle shed on the main farm. And it appears not to have water in it in game because of the viewing distance when you're up that high. And this one is main farm three. Again, a view of the main farm. And I labeled field 49 because that's the one that is kind of notched around the old oak tree there. So that's where you'll find the oak tree when you go on the farm. Now you own three fields total in game. 49 is not one of them. And when we do the official map tour, I'm going to get into all of that in more detail. And here's another view uh, looking across field 49. I'm down in the uh, like southwestern corner looking like northeast towards the oak tree there. And to my right is uh, field 53 and uh, behind me is field uh, 51. And this is just a zoomed in perspective from the same vantage point. Unfortunately, but yet fortunately, on Google Earth, you can't uh, do street view on people's property. So this is as close as I can get to the oak tree um, on Google Earth. He did send me a photograph a while back of the oak tree and what showed his son and himself walking up the road towards the oak tree. So I was going to put that up, but I decided it was a bit personal. So I decided not to do it. So I apologize about that. So here's a closer view, the main farm livestock water supply. And again, this is one of the two places that you can get water for your animals on the farm. And I kind of put arrows towards the cabin in the pier in game by the lake. I'm not sure if there's the cabin on the original farm, the real life farm, because uh, I couldn't zoom in that close, but the little fishing dock is certainly there. You can see it. So remarkable amount of detail. Oh, and please forgive all the swirlies I did in the grass. <laughs> I forgot to turn off crop destruction when I was exploring. And ye old sheep farm. <laughs> I took the liberty of numbering the fields just so you can get a better perspective of where they are because like field 24 in the game is grass versus the 24 in real life. It looks like it's sown with something else. Um, it's still dirt, so it was kind of hard to differentiate that. But um, they did a great job, spot on with the roads. There is a uh, different types of buildings on there, but then again, um, a lot of these models that they used in the game, they built themselves in Blender. You have um, Ian and Lone Wolf and Oxygen David and Bullet Bill. They did a great job getting the hang of that Blender for sure. The house is absolutely amazing on the main farm. So this one I decided to take, it's literally across the street from the sheep farm. As soon as you get to the end of the driveway leading in there, you just turn around and you see this and they just matched up so perfectly. I was like, how could I not take a picture of this? So I find this pretty cool because even stuff that kind of serves no function in the game, they still took the time to detail it to match the real area. And you can even see he added the dead tree. It's more prevalent to see it on the uh, in-game picture of the dead pine tree there. And you can kind of see it over to the extreme right in the Google photo. And again, this is a driveway with a little house that's just before the shop. Um, it doesn't serve any purpose in the game, but it's just another element of realism that's accurate to the area. And then straight ahead there, you'll see the shop in-game. And in real life, it's a empty grass lot. So there is some artistic license taken to add stuff that's crucial to the game. So things are going to vary a bit. 
And this is a view just after I passed the shop and I turned around and faced towards it. So there's the shop. Then the diner is where that property is in real life. It looked like it was some kind of little, um, I forgot the name of it, but it's some kind of little shop over there. So Winterhawk's Livestock Market. That's where you're going to purchase and sell your animals in game. And in real life, it looks like it's just a little house pretty close to the roadside there. And they've done a great job. They've reproduced the little incline there going up the hill. And um, I couldn't quite get it to match up perfectly in game, but that patch of grass you see in the middle of the driveway on the real photo, it is there right in front of Winterhawks. And I mean, the telephone pole positioning down to the last detail on some things. Really, really awesome. All right, so the chicken farm. So this one too, I had a little bit of a hard time lining up just because of the perspectives that Google gives me. But uh, there's those three trees. And in the real life photo, they're on the right hand side of the driveway going in. And in the game, they're kind of on the left there. But that road is just in front of those trees in game. I don't know what that property serves for in real life. Uh, but uh, in the game, that's your chicken farm right there. <laughs> And here we are down at the hog farm. <laughs> now, I don't know in real life if it's a pig farm or not, but this is your second water supply source on the map. All right, so back over here towards the shop again. And this is another area that's had to have a little artistic license to fit stuff in for the game. Um, so see the diner in front. Then right behind that is one of the sale points. And then kind of over to the right back there, you'll see the two little white domes. That's the biogas company. So in the real life image, when I zoomed in on the street view, it looked like it was like a garden center. And last but certainly not least, the infamous Eustace sign. <laughs> Eustace 5 miles, Landyville 8 miles, and Sim Station 10 miles. Just love it. Now, another extraordinary attention to detail, have a look at that red arrow. There's a rock cropping out from the side of the hill in real life, and he's added that into the game. I mean, those are the little things that say to me, who does that? Well, Bullet Bill does. Frontier Design does. And I have to scratch my head because it took a group of British guys to make a great American map. <laughs> Something else. So to close out, I really do have to say a huge thank you to Frontier Design and Bullet Bill. They put me right up there with the bigger boys by adding my name to the road sign in, in the game. And this is the second time an honor like this has been bestowed upon me. And to be honest, guys, I never dreamed of it happening even once. The first time my name was put on a sign was on a map by Dusty Dave, Dusty Cove 17. Now, I'm not telling you all this to brag. Please believe me. I'm just very humbled and very touched and I'm just thrilled to no end. So thank you very much, Bullet Bill, Oxygen David, Dusty Dave, and my good friend CCS101 for giving a small YouTuber like me a chance to play in the sandbox with the bigger kids. <laughs> and on top of all that, I'm a member of Frontier Design serving on the media team amongst all the other great farm sim YouTubers who also work to make Frontier Design a household name in map modding. It's really an honor. And that all being said, I want to do my very best work I can so I can represent Frontier Design and the quality, passion, and commitment they have, not only for modding, but the farming community as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I hope you'll enjoy the others that follow. So thank you very much for watching, and looking forward to seeing you again in the next video. Bye-bye for now. And on your way out, please consider following me on Facebook and Twitter and join me on Discord by becoming a member of the Simulation Gaming Society. Please give the video a thumbs up and share it with your friends if you liked it and a thumbs down if you're a big poop head and didn't like it. Consider subscribing and don't forget to tap that alert bell so you'll be the first to know when I post a new video. Thanks again.